so say that again. Sorry. Oh, okay. So what? So I hope we're going to do this properly. Yeah, you want to look up here? Well, what do you mean look up there? Up here. The camera's over there. Okay. All right. <sighs> I'm so sorry. We got we got we had a new guy that just came and I had to find the other one. You know. Right. Welcome everyone. You you got my microphone sync. All right. That's a bollocks. What drivelly nonsense. Cool. Welcome everyone to the Shoe House Podcast. My name, of course, is Roxas Mason, the uh, the idol of all broadcasting, and I'm just saying godlike. Shut up! Oh, doesn't you stupid idiots? Uh, today with me is um, a a young talent that's coming up from the ranks. I'm gonna look through my uh, my my little index of his name. It's a uh, Slim Slim uh, Slim Caesar. That's not my name. Slim Kaiser. Oh no, yeah, Slim Kaiser. That's not my name. How you doing? First of all, before we continue, yeah, it's Slim Kaiser. Oh, oh, yeah. So so it's not like the salad. No, no. Oh right. No. Oh, so oh, yeah. you, I, I want you to correctly say. Uh, my name properly, right? So, Slim, Slim, Kaiser, Kaiser. That's not my name. Kaiser, Ka Kaiser. That's not my name. Yeah, you got problem with your ears? Uh, oh no, no. Uh, you're not? Uh, yeah, you good? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you positive? Yes. All right. Right. Slim, Slim, Kaiser, Kaiser. Right, right, right. So Slim. Chrysler. I mean, shit. <laughs> That's not my name. Look, he, the new guy had stuffed up my microphone. Don't last worry time. about the new guy. All right, right, right. The new guy is the one that's not helping you pronounce names. Right. I'm so sorry. Look, look. I, I, I have many friends who. Do many friends have mispronunciation of names? No, but I, look. look. Yeah. See, watch this. Um, Slim Kaiser. That's not my name. I mean, we'll have to do. Right. <laughs> so, how was the podcast for you? I don't know. I mean, you. I was not really actually paying attention this whole time. But as a matter of fact, I was actually thinking, why was I here in the first place? I mean, uh, the last time I checked, we we we. We, we asked for a lovely wrestler, we got a lovely wrestler, and we wanted to promote his I talent. don't think I fit in a category of lovely. Oh, I mean, I mean, um, tough and rumble uh, wrestler. Is, is that the, the right way of thinking? You know, he, he get, you get in there and you It beat seems up the to me guys. that you don't have all your um, information in order. So, let's start again. Right, 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 right. <clears throat> So once again, uh, Slim Kaiser. That's not my name. Okay, again, we'll have to let it go through. How was how was the podcast for you? And you know, how was the interview? How, what did you feel from this? Do do I give my honest opinion how I felt about this? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, it was. Yeah. Is that is is that the only way you can say? I mean, yeah. I I, I threw in more words and, and questions. Yeah. Look, I, I look. We got this place rented out for about another five minutes. I'll ask one more question. Um, would you be coming back to this podcast? Thank you for that's all the time we have for this promotion and uh, we hope stop pointing up all right thank you thank you all for watching I am Ruxus Mason loving you all thank you Chrysler that's not my name yeah 
Man, I heard that you're already like getting into your wrestling match last weekend. Do you want to, you want to quickly explain that? Uh, yeah, I um, I had like a, what do we call like a wrestling weekend. Uh, I had a match on um, Saturday night at um, it was at the studio, the venue in K Road, and um, I had that one going around. And then the next day, I had another one with uh, Hughes Academy. So yeah, it's quite the Physical, tiring. Uh, oh man, I can't. <laughs> I can't imagine, man. I can't imagine. <laughs> Who were you with on Saturday in terms of the? Because I heard it's the studio. You were with um, Warriors Wrestling. Yes. Uh, so I had a match with um, Charlie Roberts, yeah. uh, the Alpha Elite. Um, great guy. Um, got a chance to work with one of the best, and he pretty much looked after me, which was actually I was very appreciative of it. Um, and then my um, match on Sunday, I had it with uh, the Divine One, James Shaw. <laughs> and uh, again, it, it's a privilege to actually get uh, to work with these guys. Um, obviously, they have a illustrious history with New Zealand wrestling. Yeah. So um, I was glad to be uh, a part of it. Nice. Yeah. Um, speaking of history, do um, you want to quickly uh, give a run through on your history and how you got into wrestling? Uh, yeah, so uh, for me, it was kind of a different journey. I was kind of pursuing uh, American football. Um, and uh, as obviously the years go by, my uh, my age obviously goes higher and it doesn't become quite the uh, importance of the mid-20 and then late and then 30. So obviously the stock market for me, for people to want to play gridiron, becomes quite low. Yeah. So um as I was just sitting around uh, with my wife and my son, I kind of came across um, wrestling because I always watch it as a comfort, uh, WWE. Um, and um, I just started to get curious and started, all right, I'm going to check out some of the local wrestlings at the time. And then um, I saw a few promos like um, Maniacs United, uh, Hughes Academy, IPW. And um, yeah, just kind of at 27, just like, all right, do I do this now or do I do this later? And I kind of just kept saying that to myself and, you know, never took any action. Just kind of like, oh, it looked nice and everything. And then it just kind of goes away. I think about um, about 2019, I think I finally took effect and, uh, yeah, started joining. Um, I joined all oh, Maniacs. Uh, first was my first uh taste of what professional wrestling was uh, they kind of helped they pretty much helped me with uh, the basic stuff um as time went by i um i joined up with um Fala dojo hey. um and um got a chance to uh you know train with um bad luck Fale. and then uh, his trainers were it was grueling very physical um but it definitely worth uh worth it in the end because you know you feel like you've done something with yourself so as time went by i started to learn more and more uh try to perfect my craft um and you know learning the ins and outs of how to become a professional wrestler um uh, took a while because i keep thinking of doing luchador and you know lightweight moves but they, you know don't do that you're you're a big dude I was like, oh okay so i gotta i gotta <laughs> i gotta simmer it down a bit and um and it, it's it's kind of good that way because you know that that builds your character yeah. around well your your whole entire being so i learned that uh quite well from them and then yeah i eventually went to uh warrior last year and then trained with them and then yeah they helped me um, branch off in February got a debut as a enforcer for Anthony Khan great. Yeah, it was great it was oh, fun um, nice. and then yeah had my first actual match at uh, the last uh, rumble last man rumble in April and then yeah it kind of just went from there so it felt great you know it felt good that I'm actually doing something about it and then actually seeing it progress in front of me and uh, yeah, you know, being at thirty six now, it's kind of the DDP route. So, <laughs> so you know, it's either go for broke for me. So, and so far, it's pretty much everything on go now. So, we'll see how it goes later down in the future. 
first and foremost, thirty six year old, you look like you're you're still in your bloody twenties. No, no, no. You're twenty five to me. I'm like, <laughs> you you make DP look like he's like in his fifties. You know, <laughs> damn. You you know, going back to his footage, he's like, oh yeah, no, he he look cool. But then I was like looking you from was like. <laughs> Nah, he's nah, he can't be. No, he um, he can't. no I. Um, it's funny because like part of me didn't want to do wrestling yeah. as time went by, but then um, when I learned that DDP did it at thirty six, yeah. I was like thirty two, thirty three, and I thought to myself, okay, that that's kind of setting a goal for me. So I had this much years of trying to learn what I can, and uh, I made the most of it. And when I finally, when it became thirty six, I was like, all right, it's either. We go all out now or just stick to full-time working and just, you know, focus on that craft. Focus right. on that craft. So, yeah, um, I'm glad it's progressing as it is now, and I'm hopefully to see how it goes further. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned uh, Warriors Wrestling. Uh, Shout-outs to Warriors <laughs> Wrestling right there. <laughs> Aaron, I hope you're watching this because I heard you you, you, you mentioned about your role at, with Khan and being the enforcer, which is ironic at the moment being in the uh, the uh, the Empire as the enforcer. You know, <laughs> did you ever get to interact with Aaron uh, on your first time around? Yeah, so I I got a chance to meet Aaron uh, before uh, he started a warrior. He was he you will usually come by uh, Fala Dojo um, and. You know, it's it's for me. It's kind of a weird thing. Like Bad Luck Fale and Aaron Hanade. You're like, to to any wrestling fan, it's like these guys are from New Japan. Yeah. You know, like it's like a whoa. And then like, for me to come back from a nine to five job and just to go to training, and there they are, and like, oh hey, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, he's like, should I say hi to the guy? But no, there uh, he was really cool and. Um, he has like an excellent uh, background in wrestling, amateur wrestling. Uh, sorry, I don't want to say grappling wrestling. And um, he's such a cool guy, down to earth, and a great dude. And then I remember my first time, he was showing us how to do some techniques. And then he called me up to, you know, hey, let's see what we could do. And I was like, oh, no. All right, cool. So part of me was like, I'm just going to throw my weight on this guy. And then I think when we, and we were tied up and everything. And then when I tried to bring him down, all I heard was, well, hey, oh, look at this guy. And I was like, oh, well, clearly he's not taking me seriously. <laughs> and then sure enough, I was right. Got me on the ground, put me like in the in a submission. I, <laughs> I was like, gonna, <laughs> and it's like, man. But then, you know, for him, he's like, oh, you're a big guy. And he's very encouraging. And yeah. he always likes, you know, has so much positive out of it. And I was like, and he always comes up to me, he goes, yeah, maybe if we get you to do this. And, you know, I take whatever they tell me and I literally take it as, as we you know, word, of, you know, don't want to try to say, yeah, well, I don't want to do that. I literally take whatever they say to me because these guys are, you know, they're in the main, they're up there with New Japan. And yeah, absolutely. So I want to, you know, be a part of that. So I take whatever they tell me as word and be like, yep. I remember that from now on, though. So, yeah. No, oh, man, that's cool. You know, I was at that at that same mind, mindset when I was interviewing Fale. You know, I was just like, my mind's gone, <laughs> everything's gone, no signal. You know, but <laughs> you know, when you do have those those times where everything you take out, which is like the fandom stuff, and you become that person, and you go, oh, okay, we can interact with them. Mm, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it it gets to it gets to an important part where you you get to learn about that person and then you get to learn about yourself because as you interact you, you sort of build yourself up. Yeah. So with that said, how did you establish your character? Because I would like to know, you know, you know, if I could I could have asked Farley. Farley would have explained his character build, but you know he's mm. already he's already he you know the answers would be the same thing that you know you've already seen so far mm -hmm. but i would like to ask from a, a you know a young establishing wrestler who's building his character through and through you know? young. <laughs> no you're still young to me bro. Don't you're still young to me <laughs> um so uh how did my character come out of yeah yeah so how do i flush out my character so um Nothing against them, but the Usos kind of took <laughs> what I was kind of going for when I was in the world of learning to become a wrestler. I wanted to be this street guy from the States and everything. And then, you know, when the Usos turned heel, they they took that. And I was like, well, I'm going to be a, 
I'm going to be a carbon copy of what they're doing. Right. But, um, you know, at the same time, you know, uh, I don't try to, uh, I was like, oh, look, I just got to keep sticking to my, stick my two feet on the ground and just keep what I want to go with. Yeah. So the whole persona for me was um, being from America. I wanted to uh, establish that here in New Zealand, like this guy's from the States, this guy's from Seattle. So I wanted to take everything um, back home and then bring it here. So obviously, um, my entire family from Seattle all grew up in High Point, and uh, they're all still still residing in Seattle as it is. And uh, you know, uh, High Point is not really uh, doesn't sound like a really fancy place in Seattle. It's quite the polar opposite. So uh, it's pretty much uh, the Otara Rewa area Yo. for me in Seattle. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. for us, it's like uh, White Center, Tequila, High Point. Just to name a few, uh, and, and um, basically my family, uh, I took in that kind of role. Uh, all my older cousins and everything, what they were like, you know, um, they're quite well known in the area. So if they ever see, if I told them, "Oh, I'm a Fala Congo," they'll mention, "Oh, do you know Tank?" or "Oh, do you know Sweetheart?" Oh, he's like, "Oh, those are my cousins." <laughs> so, and then, um, yeah, I just wanted to personify the the hood street kind of role. So. Um, I took that in, and um, yeah, it, it it took a while because I keep thinking, oh, I might switch it up or anything. But I, you know, when you're building a character, it's hard to tell what would be a a good idea or will be a bad idea. And then when you start questioning yourself, it becomes a a no idea. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I I kind of um, as time went by, when I finally got a chance to. Uh, debut, um, Aaron actually went up to me and he goes, what character do you want to go for? And then I just sat there and then, you know, that whole don't know what to say, but I just said, oh, be a gangster. He goes, well, then be a gangster. And then, you know, him saying that makes me like, sweet, cool, I'm going to go with it. So um, I try to think as much street hoodie that I could be out of that. And then I just pretty much went on with that. Had a mean mugging look. Yeah. Um, just basically don't give a damn. And then, um, you know, obviously that's the kind of role that I want to stick with. So kind of like going off like, you know, Samoa Joe. Yeah. How he just has that in ring of just, you know, mm -hmm. bottom. Yeah, just mean. Yeah. Uh, and then much like the Usos, how they're just street. You know, kind of similar in that kind of aspect. Yeah, that's so just savvy. And then, um, yeah, and it just kind of built from there. And then as time went by, I kind of just started to get more and more. So um, my, one of my favorite rappers, DMX. Hey. Um, and uh, at his concert, he had a bandana where he tied it to the side of the knots on this side and it flags out. So uh, on the weekend, I did that. Because, <laughs> so, you know, again... Building up the fact that I'm from the States. So I did that. I did that as my intro, you know, walked out. And then, you know, I saw some of the pictures like, man, I look really good. <laughs> I was like, I'm, real, I'm looking like an actual gangster out there. Hey. So uh, I did it again on Sunday. And then, you know, if, you know, I'm starting to now flesh out more of my character. So it, it's quite a gamble to jump on, though. But when you see it, you know, flourish in front of people and people are like, oh, that, you know, that guy's cool. Then you're like, okay, you're going on the right track somewhere. So absolutely, yeah. I'll give you, I'll give you my quick rundown of my character. Okay, go for it. So uh, my character, yeah, is has a little bit of Yano, so I want to be crazy like him. Yeah. So I'll just so as as I quickly into to the ring, I'm I'm like I'm I'm like looking around, being mischievous. Yes. You know. And then having that whole have the having that whole if because I always want to be sick and if I'm going to be young, if I'm going to do that Yano thing where I'm just like don't worry don't don't, don't, yeah, don't yeah. worry about me yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna go in my corner don't yeah. worry about me and then have the mean streak at the end so just like the unexpected yeah comes so out. a quick one eighty switch yeah. it to <laughs> hey man hey I can see that happening. I and can then, definitely see that happening. Look, my look. I want to take Yano's ending, which is basically low blow into a roll up. <laughs> <laughs> look, that's that's what I want. It's like because every time I I don't know how he manages it, but he gets away with all these dirty tactics, yeah. and everyone still cheer him. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I want this. That's yeah. that's what I want in my in my career. I want to be Yano. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, look, go for it, bro. I, I reckon you should do it. Yeah, really? I mean, you could be the New Zealand Yano. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll appreciate it, but hopefully he won't. Okay, hey, you took my character. <laughs> but no, I, I mean, shoot. 
You yeah. could be the New Zealand Yano. Yeah. Um, don't give well, my producer any ideas. He's going to start pushing that. Oh, He's probably no. like, Yano, New Zealand, check. <laughs> <Two percent. laughs> yeah. There we go. So, speaking of, speaking of like uh, going back to the whole wrestling aspects, did you ever, um, so after your three matches, are you thinking of going on tour? Because I know mostly our indie wrestlers, after they're you know staying at home mm. for like after four, five, six matches, they go off off to the road to yeah. get sent out. What is your thoughts about doing that sort of thing? And would it be good for you? I yeah. So uh, much of me doing the whole go for broke. Um, I am. I eventually did. Um, like guys like Jamie Tangataesa, you know, um, young kid that just started in obviously one spot and got himself in SPW, VPW. I kind of pretty much want to go on that same route because, like, um, I do want to see how far I can go with this, though. Um, I did get a chance to um, meet with uh, Rough Guts in the, the last uh, Rumble, yeah. last man Rumble, and it was uh, it was really cool. Um, and, you know, he, he kind of shouts, like, hey, well, let me know we're in Wellington. And I was like, oh, cool. And then... Um, yeah, I, I, as time went by, then I was like, okay, I really want to branch out. Like, yeah. um, nothing wrong with where I am. It's like right now I've kind of submitted myself, from my perspective, like three matches in. Okay, so when I did the Hughes Academy match, you know, it felt bizarre because it wasn't under the promotion I was with. It was with different. And But I kind of see from a lot of wrestlers' perspective, when they're building their character, they always go to small local. And so I wanted to do that, though. So, you know, but it wasn't me going to that. I was happy to be a part of that, um, the whole promo with the Hughes, uh, Hughes Academy. It was fun. And then, you know, and then I hope to branch out later down the line. You know, I, I try not – I'm kind of more very – cautious of what i go out because i want to be that guy and be like hey i want to be on your show and then who's that guy yeah you know? <laughs> and then what a blues guy <laughs> so, yeah. so I, I don't want to throw out names out low, <laughs> low key <laughs> so um yeah but like um ants was uh he's the one that said hey reach out to these guys and then i reached out to them i even typed i don't know what to say yeah. but I want to branch out my character. What do I need to do? Uh, they were like, dude, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. Just let us take your name out. And then a few days later, that's when they were like, hey, what are you doing on the 21st? I was like, oh, it's just my day off. It's like, okay, well, I have a match with you and Shaw. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it, it kind of like, it didn't really sink into like after I read that you versus Shaw at Hughes Academy. And yeah, I went, man. okay, you know, it's it's finally going the way I want it to be, but you know, I wanted to really, really show that I'm capable of what I can do in the ring. And um, guys like Charlie Roberts, um, he was so good with me in the, on the Saturday night match. And uh, after the match, I will go to the um, we'll go to the back and I'm like, how do I do? How do I do? Because I'm so anxious to know what I've missed done and what I have done uh, correct and what I've done uh, wrong. And uh, you know. I'm always taking to whatever they tell me, like, you need to don't do this too much or you need to do this. Um, and they were like, no, you're fine. And then, you know, it kind of went, yeah, but tell me how you really feel. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. don't just tell me that. But um, he said I was fine. And then, you know, an another one of our wrestlers who was uh, watching, he said, hey, no, you did really good. Um, I missed one thing, but besides that, you were fine the entirety of the match. Wow. And then um, I did the same thing on Sunday with Shaw's match. Um Went to the back. I was like, hey, how did I do? Because, like, I really want to make a name for myself, but I also want to show them that I'm a really good worker with them. And then much of the same was, hey, no, you did great. It was like, are you sure? I'm getting a lot. I was like, I don't want to force me. Like, yeah, I'm happy about that. But it's like, are you guys, is there anything anywhere? He's like, no, you were fine. And then that kind of helped me go, okay, I'm doing something right yeah. to these guys, though. Yeah. And uh, so far, this is just the – beginning of uh me building my character out there and hopefully uh, i do get reached out later down the line but you know at the same time i want to just play my cards right and just keep building what i have now so yeah you know it, it's good to hear that sort of thing and especially being cultivated in the lock in the wrestling locker rooms you know because mm -hmm. you think back even when you listen to like um previous um 
uh, wrestlers, you know, I, uh, I instantly think about you know how Bob Holly used to be when with yeah. his with his trainees. You know, there was it was so rough. You know, yeah. their locker room culture was very not very good. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I I took that to heart when I was with um, when I was training at Fala Dojo. Like the training was gruesome, like yeah. it was intense and everything. But then um, when we get into the ring and learn, you know, getting coached by like. Bad Luck Fale himself, Dux Fale and, and Tony Cozina, his yeah. actual girl. You know, when we hear all the stories of like, you need to do this more, you need to do this less. If you don't do this, or you know, you, you're not showing what you can, or you need to protect your... So there's a lot going into it. Like, I did thought, oh, I thought I just got to throw him around. <laughs> but it's like, no, there's more to it. Yeah. Uh, and um, I've always thought to myself, look, when I get into this, because... I wanted to show respect to who I wrestled because yeah. um, for me, it's like, even though I'm bigger than that person, I will never discredit them because if they've been there longer than I have, there's no place for me to be like, oh, I can do whatever I want. No, I don't want to be that guy. So I've always wanted to show respect and courtesy like, hey, thank you for letting me do my spots on you. Mm-hmm. Um, like I did with Rough Guts and uh, the Deadly Sins. They let me do the spots. And they were like, no, you were fine. And I was like, cool. You know, and I was like, I just want to thank you. They're like, oh, you don't have to thank me. But it's like, yeah, well, you know, I wanted to show respect because you guys have been here longer than me. And I'm still a pup. You know, I'm still a rookie to this, though. And uh, I've always kept that. So um, everywhere I go, I've always kept the uh, showing appreciation to the guys there. So man, You're ready to be a young lion, man. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. <laughs> because, I, because every time when I think about young lions, I'm already thinking about, like, I'm gonna throw some names. Um, okay. Michael Richardson, mm-hmm. because I made I made him down at the Manicale train station, and funny funny story is that uh, I'm behind him and he's wearing the New Japan jacket. I'm like, bro, all right, all right, he's a New Japan fan, and then the brother swept this card, and nothing declined. I'm like, oh, bro, all right. All right, hey bro, I'll pay for it. No, don't worry about it. He looks at me. He goes, "Are you sure, bro?" And I'm like, yeah, 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 I'll pay for it. <laughs> so swipe the card through, paid for his stuff, and he's like, "Oh, bro, thank you so much." He's like, "Bro, you know, I respect the New Japan jacket." And he goes, "Bro, I'm just about to go hit off," and he's telling me about his time. He's going to hit off for um, G1. To yes. Be, along with uh, uh, Liam Fury, so yes, I'm throwing yes. those name, names out, and he's like, "Oh, yeah, 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 cool. Can I get your signature?" And he's like, "Oh, you're sweet." Signed it, and I have personally framed that that signature, oh, and nice. I'm like happy about that. When I saw him, um, so explanation: uh, there's a wrestler by the name a uh, young no, a senior by the name of Minoru Suzuki, mm-hmm. and his gimmick is that he likes to throw the young lions, the 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 young boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happens is that I saw two New Zealand boys. <laughs> <laughs> getting whipped by Minoru Suzuki so I'm just going oh dear god <laughs> I'm hoping that I get to see you try oh to- <laughs> man no oh man oh shout out to Kratos I've, I've, I've called him Kratos yeah oh, Michael Richards because uh, he had the beer game going on I remember and he that. was actually and I just be like oh what up Kratos and he does this and I always call him Kratos wherever I go so uh, yeah no that's that's my boy yeah. He's actually really cool. Um, yeah, the, the, I've, I, I took part in what was not much of the Young Lions, but I took part in what was like advanced wrestling. Uh, basically, well, we got taught by Tony Cozina and everything, and then it was only twice a week. So I took that as my um, bread and butter of learning how to wrestle. Uh, and at the same time, we did have the intakes you know, depending on what it, they'll come and join us. So I got a chance to, you know, meet some of the guys out there, like um, Mark Gorgeous being one of them, and some of the international guys, some from Australia, and then some from overseas in Germany. They'll be like Aaron Solo and all that yeah, stuff. So yeah, Aaron Solo did. So, yeah, um, you know, I got a chance to, like, meet these guys, you know, bring even uh, Juicy for now. He's uh, one of the biggest guys in Texas, dude, as I came in. He's, like, solid big. Yeah. And, um... Right now, he obviously he's back in the states and he's making a name for himself out God, there. Oh, nice! So yeah, so uh, he's one to look out too. And um, yeah, just learning from obviously different experience from these guys, and you know, giving hearing them give advice again. I take in whatever I can, though. You know, being the oldest, <laughs> oldest guy there. But you know, these young guys that've been doing it longer than me, I always like to listen to what they have to say, and it's like okay, keep that in mind, though. So yeah. 
So, um, so you you've absorbed as much as you can. You're on your third. You're on your third match, going to your fourth possibly. Um, what advice could you give to someone like myself who wants to get into wrestling? What are the things that I need to do to prepare myself before stepping into somewhere somewhere like Fale's dojo and go, hey, they put me in a headlock. <laughs> wow. Um, man, I could come off as Scar from Lanky and be like, be prepared, but nah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, I would probably say, oh, for personally for me, I guess my advice for you was um, just listen. That's, that's the best way you can actually... Not much uh, approval, but uh, gain knowledge from them. The 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 trainers there, whether it's uh, dojo or it's anywhere else, you know, they have the the know how to do it. And basically, you would want to always listen to what they tell you and then like go with an open mind. You know, like never ever go there and be like, oh, but I want to do that. I want to do that. Yeah, you you can, but you know, it's best if they said we want you to do that. It's best just to go that way because for all we know, that could work for you. I'm like, oh, hey. Absolutely. So I would just say just go for it. And at the same time, just go in there with an open mind and just listen. And then I guarantee you, you can soak up as much information that they tell you. And you'd be surprised. You, you beat a New Zealand Yano as it is. Yeah. And then we'll see you go. Like, yeah. Oh, now we definitely have to have a match. <laughs> <laughs> just, just don't get mad at me when I the roll up, and then that's it. <laughs> oh, the roll up. Oh, man, that would be that would be quite the upset on my half, though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I'll, I'll come up to my last two questions. Um, my, one of them being, what do you see stuff in the future? What, what is what is the the future goal for you? Now that you've already had your step into a ring, mm. you got the feel of it. What is it? What is it next for for Victor? Oh man, um, it's just to see how far I can take this. I think for me, it, it was uh, I will give it a try. And now, now I've gone further from where I have. It's like all right. Um, how far can you go with it, though? So for me, it's like if I can make my a name for myself here in New Zealand, in New Zealand wrestling, with the extensive time I have, <laughs> you know, uh, then you know we'll see how it goes from there. Um, but yeah, just I think a goal is just to be a well-known wrestler here in New Zealand. Be like, oh, that American guy, Slim Kaisa, yo, that's that's how we know him, and you know, I kind of like, yeah. I've got myself somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, you know, just that experience of, you know, getting myself recognized out there. Though. So, yeah, I think my goal, and oh man, I'm rambling. No, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think my goal is just to just do well here in New Zealand wrestling and hopefully make a name for myself. And then, if it be, I can branch out outside overseas or back at home in Seattle. So sweet, man! <laughs> I can't wait to see Slim Kaisa. Is that right? Yeah. So Slim Kaisa is the uh, our name I came up with. Originally was uh, Kaisa, and Arrow's like, "Yep, yeah, we'll go with that." But then uh, as time went by, I thought, "Oh man, Kaisa just it sounds fine." But then you know, if I'm coming from the streets, they're like, "Man, what do we do in the streets?" It's always like, "Man, there's always a nickname there." So I came up with. Slim Kaisa, and uh, funny enough, they are two of my cousin's names. So Slim is actually uh, my cousin, you'll see uh, but everyone knows him as Slim. And then my other cousin is Kaisa, because I just like the name Kaisa. <laughs> so I, I put the two together, and then I was like, oh, man, you know, bad luck father, Slim Kaisa. Mm. So it's just kind of the, the gimmick name and the real name, they kind of blend them together. And then sure enough, you know, I... Everyone kept saying, oh, it's slim. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's sticking somewhere. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I kind of went with that name. And uh, I told my family up in, the, in Seattle, I was like, hey, I'm going to Slim Kaiser. And they were like, oh, look at you. Hey, what a cool <laughs> like, guy. So, so yeah, so the goal is to get Slim Kaiser really popular here in New Zealand. Yeah. And then we'll see how it goes for that. Sweet. And my final question is, where can we find you? Uh, so... <laughs> Embarrassing enough, I made an Instagram for my Oh, that's not embarrassing, brother. <laughs> I, Come on. I, I had to like, oh, man, I'm, I'm getting a lot of ask about me. So I, I eventually jumped on, so I made a Slim Kaisa on Instagram. 
that's gonna be the start for the time. <laughs> that's cool. That's <laughs> so fine. we go from there. Uh, but yeah, you, I'm out with the Warrior Wrestling. Dakota and Zed. Right. Those guys though. So yeah. Sweet man, sweet. Um, thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you for having me. No man. worries, man. Look, <laughs> you did, you did naturally well, man. And oh. <laughs> as a performer, you did amazingly well. And I oh, wish you man. for the best, man. I appreciate it. No, we'll do, man. Thank you so thank much. You, and thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as Will is producing this. <laughs> and I'll see you all in the next one.